There are, you know, many medieval techniques that impress us, but few are as quietly powerful as the way craftspeople protected wood long before industrial preservatives existed. One detail often overlooked in shipbuilding archives, monastic carpentry records, and archaeological sites is that entire structures survived storms, seawater, insects, salt spray, and centuries of weathering without modern chemicals. Before discussing formulas or methods, it is worth holding on to one truth. Medieval builders worked with limited resources, yet their wood endured voyages across oceans and the slow grind of time itself. This endurance wasn't an accident. It was the result of a deliberate technique that is just as effective for modern homesteaders, bushcrafters and restoration enthusiasts today. Once known only to shipwrights and craftsmen, it is now resurfacing as an invaluable method for anyone serious about long-term wood survival. How medieval builders discovered the secret through necessity, not theory. Survival in medieval Europe depended on wood. Homes, bridges, carts, barns, weapons, tools, and of course ships all relied on the right combination of timber and treatment. When seawater began to eat away at planks, or when insects hollowed beams from within, lessons were learned quickly. Builders noticed which woods rotted, which hardened, which warped, and which remained sturdy after years of exposure. This close observation led to a method that combined heat, natural oils, and plant-derived tar, what we now call pine tar treatment. Pine tar was not applied because it smelled good or gave wood a dark shine. It was used because it repelled water-resisted fungi, discouraged insects, and permeated deep into the grain. When heated and combined with natural oils from animal fat or linseed, the mixture could travel even farther into the wood fibres. It created an armour-like shield that boats, barns and beams depended on for centuries. Ships coated in tar crossed entire oceans without losing structural integrity. Viking ships, Hanseatic trade vessels and medieval fishing fleets all relied on it because nothing else worked as reliably. The key to understanding pine tar's power is its molecular structure. When heated, the resin breaks down into compounds that bind to wood fibres. This binding does not merely sit on the surface, it fuses with the outer layers of the wood. Once cooled, the treated area becomes hydrophobic. Water rolls off instead of soaking in. Wood that stays dry is wood that resists rot. For medieval shipbuilders, the stakes were high. A ship was not simply a vessel. It was livelihood, trade and survival. A failing hull could sink an entire crew. Because of this, pine tar treatment became standard practice in Scandinavian and Northern European shipyards. The treatment often involved heating pine tar slowly until it thinned then brushing it onto warm or sun-heated planks so the penetration increased. In some coastal areas, planks were even soaked in heated tar baths, especially for high-stress parts like keelboards and rib timbers. Each coat strengthened the wood further until the planks were nearly waterproof. In some surviving historic ships, layers of tar applied centuries ago remain visible, still dark, still protective. Unlike a romanticised version of medieval life, the reality was that every resource had to be stretched. People discovered that the same technique used to protect ships worked equally well for homes, granaries, fences and tools. 
Farmers coated shovel handles and wagon components in tar oil mixtures to prevent cracking from sun exposure. Monks in timber monasteries treated foundation beams to slow ground moisture decay. Even early bridge builders applied tar to footings before placing them into riverbeds. This consistent use across different regions demonstrates how universal the method was. It did not matter whether a community lived on a coast, in a mountain valley, or behind city walls. Wood was precious everywhere, and in every location this treatment extended the lifespan of lumber far beyond untreated timber. The method translates easily to modern survival and homestead applications. The first step is selecting pure pine tar, ideally cold-pressed or kiln-derived with no added solvents. This is the closest to what medieval builders used. A mixing oil such as raw linseed or boiled linseed helps the tar penetrate deeply. A common ratio is one part pine tar to one part oil, heated slowly until the consistency becomes spreadable. The wood should be dry, clean, and preferably warm by sun or proximity to a fire. Warm wood absorbs the treatment more readily. The mixture is then brushed on generously, allowed to soak, and wiped lightly if pooling occurs. A single coat provides protection, but several coats spaced across days or weeks offer the longevity medieval builders relied on. The wood will darken significantly, which is a sign of proper absorption. A modern example would be treating the post of an outdoor shed or chicken run. Instead of using pressure-treated wood, which contains chemicals that can leach into soil, a pine tar treatment creates long-lasting resistance to moisture and pests. Another example involves tool handles. Applying pine tar and oil to an axe handle not only protects it, but also gives a tacky, grippy texture prized by traditional woodsmen. For those building small boats, canoes or rafts, pine tar remains one of the most reliable coatings available. Its performance has not changed in a thousand years. If applied correctly, it binds to the grain, withstands water, and adds years to the vessel's life. Studying medieval craftsmanship reveals a level of empirical engineering that is often underestimated. These people were not simply following tradition blindly. Their methods evolved through hard-earned trial and error. Pine tar treatment survived past the medieval era into the age of exploration because it consistently worked. It gave ships the strength to cross cold oceans and return with stories, goods and knowledge. It preserved structures that still stand today. For survivalists, the method offers something more than historical insight. It provides a chemical-free, durable, and field-ready way to strengthen wood using materials found in nature. It reduces dependency on store-bought treatments and allows wood to survive harsh weather without complex equipment. The medieval wood protection trick that carried ships across oceans remains one of the most effective preservation methods ever developed. Whether you are restoring a tool, sealing a structure, or exploring historical skills, this technique connects you to a tradition that has stood for centuries. If you want more deep dives into historical knowledge that still holds power today, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share this video with others who appreciate serious history brought to practical life.